Hello and a very warm welcome to this video. Uh, in this particular video, I am going to take you through the concept of sharp ratio. So we are going to discuss what is called as the sharp ratio. And we are also going to calculate sharp ratio. Typically, in the portfolio manager certification exam, you may get one question related to sharp ratio. Uh, the formula for sharp ratio is uh, very well known and it's uh, written here. It says sharp ratio calculation is done by using the return of the portfolio minus risk free return upon standard deviation of return on portfolio, which is sigma p. Now, when we calculate sharp ratio, we need certain variables. We definitely need a portfolio. So, this is our portfolio, which is made of two stocks stock A and stock B. They have Weightage in the portfolio, the, both these stocks, A has got weightage of 40%, B has got weightage of 60%. Similarly, these stocks have generated return of 15 and 17%, and the standard deviation of both the stocks is 15 and 12%. Now, these are all assumed numbers. Uh, you can also take a practical market number. Correlation, which is an important variable for calculating sharp ratio because you, we have to calculate portfolio risk so correlation has been assumed to be one typically the correlation ranges from minus one to plus one so we have taken the correlation to be plus one it can be any value between minus one and one so how do we calculate sharp ratio to calculate the sharp ratio we will take risk free return uh, as a assume number again and risk free return in our case we are taking it to be six percent now the risk free return can be derived from some of the benchmarks like my uh, some mutual funds in india use this as the benchmark and calculate a uh, sharp ratio using my as the benchmark so let us move ahead and let us calculate the first component of a uh, sharp ratio which is the portfolio return or return of the portfolio so we can very clearly see here that we have two stocks in our portfolio which is stock a and stock b and their weightages have been given so what do we do first we calculate stock a uh, a return with the weightage so 40 percent multiplied by 15 percent is what is the return of the stock a that it contributes to portfolio Similarly, we take stock B and we calculate what is the contribution of stock B in the portfolio. So for that, weightage multiplied by return has to be taken and that's the value that you get. Now, to find out the portfolio return, you will sum both the values. So this plus this close bracket and you will get the portfolio return. So our portfolio return has been calculated now. So this is what is your portfolio return. Now, once we have calculated portfolio return, we have the numerator data available with us, which is return of the portfolio and risk free return. What is not available is the portfolio risk. So how do we calculate portfolio risk? We will use the formula which is listed here, which is the Harry Markowitz formula for portfolio risk calculation. So it has three components, which you can see here, the first one, the second one, and the third one. So we'll break all three components and do the calculation. So let us do the calculation for the first, uh, you know, stock, uh, which is A. So we are taking, uh, we are calculating it for A. So when we calculate, we have to look at weightage of one square, sigma of one square. So weightage is very clearly 40%, which we can write as 0.4 raised to 2 okay uh, and the standard deviation is uh, given uh, here as 15% uh, so we will take it as 0 0.15 raised to 2 okay now we have got this and this is the solution for the first component of the formula but we will have to multiply this value with the uh, value below uh, to find out what should be the uh, full solution so we multiply this with this value so we have got the solution which is 
the solution for the stock A in the portfolio, which is 0 0.0036. Now, now we go to the stock B. So we have to also look at B because there are two stocks. So B is the second component that we have. So what do we do? Similarly, will work for B. So weightage of B, sigma of B. So weightage is given here. So 0 0.6 raised to 2. Okay. Similarly, we have the risk given here, which is 12%. So 0 0.12 raised to 2, right? So we have the values now and we similarly multiply this with this, which is what is expected as part of the formula. And we'll get the value, which is this much. Now we have got the first component answer, second. Now we move to the third one, which is easier. So what do we do here? We write here 2 multiplied by weightage of the first one which is 0 0.4 multiplied by weightage of the second one which is 0 0.6 or 0 0.6 okay multiplied further by 0 0.15 which is the sigma value for the first one further multiplied by 0 0.12 now we will get the solution for the third component which is put here correlation value is 1 so we can put the correlation to be 1 straight away. But anything which is multiplied with 1, the value does not change. So you can even ignore that if the value is 1. So what do we get now as the solution? We get this as the solution. So we have got solution for all the three components, A, B, and the third component. So as per the formula, we have to add it. So how do we add it? We'll add it like this, this, plus this plus this three all three values and we have the total value as this much now we have to do the square root of this okay so what how do we do square root so we will write s q r t and select this value and we'll find the square root which works out to be one zero point one three two now zero point one three two we have to convert it into percentage so how do we convert it into percentage so we will convert it into percentage here, which is change this to percentage, right? So once we change this to percentage, we will get the percentage value, which works out to be 13.2%. So this is what, this is my sigma P, or what I can call this as a portfolio risk. So now I have all the three values which I need to calculate this sharp ratio. We have the portfolio return, which is given here. We have the portfolio risk and we have the risk free rate. So let us use the formula and then see how do we arrive at the sharp ratio. So we will first take the portfolio return to find out the sharp ratio, which I'm writing here. So sharp ratio that we calculate will be calculated as follows portfolio return minus risk free return. So that is the numerator value. So we get it this as the value this divided by the risk of the portfolio so this is your risk so you get your sharp ratio which is this value this is there is a formatting issue because of which we are getting this number so we'll sort it out we'll put it as the number okay so we are getting a sharp ratio which is 0 0.77 now this sharp ratio basically indicates what what does this indicate uh the the portfolio manager or anybody who is owning this portfolio is generating okay uh, is generating uh, let me put the spelling correctly is generating 0 0.77 uh, as the return okay for uh, as the return per unit of a risk now this is what is the meaning of uh, sharp ratio so per unit of risk here is basically a percentage so for a percent i am generating zero for one percent of risk i am generating 0 0.77 percent of return is what we are trying to indicate here higher the sharp ratio better is the fund performance okay so we will put this statement higher the sharp ratio uh, better is the better is the performance of the fund Okay, that is how we look at sharp ratio. Now, now, now let us look at one example. 
which is where we will get to know which is the best fund as per the sharp ratio so we have five funds here okay and we will evaluate which is the best fund out of the five for this we will need a risk free rate so we will use risk free rate which is co compulsory to calculate or required to calculate sharp ratio so suppose risk free risk free rate happens to be uh, say 6% this is an assumed number okay then what will be the sharp ratio so we will use the sharp ratio here so sharp ratio is something that we will calculate and how do we calculate it so we will put the value as this minus this okay which is what we have done till now upon this okay so we get a value okay uh, i will format this value after we are done with all of them so what do we do is that uh, we have found this value first value the second value that we will again do is this minus this which is your risk free rate okay so i'm doing it step wise you can fix the columns and also do it that way but i'm deliberately doing it uh, uh, this way so that we you know we get the numbers so this is the second value then we go and say this minus this which is your risk free return and this is your third calculation that you have so now you will divide it by the sigma which is this much okay the the next one that we have is this which is let me put it in brackets at the beginning itself this minus the risk free rate okay and this has to be divided by the portfolio risk uh, we have the three numbers i'm going to format the numbers please wait for that so this minus this okay upon uh this value. so we have got all the five numbers okay now how do we show which is the best sharp ratio so we change it okay and we show it as a value here right so that we are able to figure out which happens to be the best sharp ratio so amongst the five we can see very clearly here the last one has the highest sharp ratio so the fund e is the best fund right i hope this made some sense for you and you were able to understand the concept of sharp ratio do write to me on my gmail which is mentioned in the video at the end of the video thank you for watching